Good evening. Oh, I can't say good night. Good night means good as bad. <laughs> good evening. <sir. laughs> well, sister, I, I, if you can get closer to the phone, might work better. Zoom have a problem because the software they have uh, some uh, some setup, you know, so called um, allegories. Depends on. They feed up is the background noises, you know. So if we're too far away, they they will work hard to feed your voice away. So yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So how are you? Right. Yeah, you still unclear, unclear to me a little bit. I can hear you last. Uh, say are you hunting there? Honey, where? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. Yeah. Well, our Lord, we just praise you. We thank you. We appreciate what you're doing. Um, it's not necessarily enjoyable, comfortable to our to ourselves. But Lord, there is a settlement and a hope that nothing can rob, Lord, even our soul can never touch lord i pray that it's in from this place of hope and confidence that you are more than sorry you're more than loving and uh, more than forgiving but you actually knows what you're doing lord you do all things for the good for the best actually for us but i thank you for in this sister in trusting many in, in her family lord I think in the depth of their heart, they want to serve you. They, they want to know you. They want to do your will, Lord. It is an honor privilege to detect that sincereness in their heart. So we bless it, Lord. We ask you to bless it. We will ask you to continue to release the things that it, they need to be released, Lord, and burden them with the things they need to be burdened. A holy passion, a sincere desire to serve you, to love you, to love your people, to love your purposes. In this, I praise you, Lord, for this dear sister. She has been a treasure to me, for sure, to many others, Lord. More and more, I recognize how valuable she is in your sight. Lord, she sometimes herself may not be able to see that, but if, Lord, we continue to, to let ask you to help her to see it, Lord. She's a true daughter of yours, a true son of yours. A true servant of yours, Lord. So let her continue to grow, continue to 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 serve you in great capacity for her real joy is actually to serve you, Lord, to love on you, to know you more, Lord. And what a what a wonderful, what a wonderful posture of heart, Lord. You put that desire there. Let no man hold it back, Lord. Not even herself. And uh, let it be graced and released. To, to a greater capacity. And to, Lord, you never resist those who seek you, Lord. And you always fulfill and satisfy those who eagerly want to know you, Lord. In this life, we praise you. We thank you for her, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Mm. What would you care to pray? I uh, know. So we can move on then. Mm. Or belong every for every thought of, of ours to to be about you and about your way lord knowing you is is what this life is about mm. father I, I see you in everything mm. Lord, you have never left your people. You have never left us um, in a way that left us wanting outside of your desire to want you more or left us needing outside of the desire to need you more. And yeah. You just are forever teaching and growing mm -hmm. us, Lord. I, I pray even now, Father, for a supernatural um, even visitation from your 
um, in your presence, Lord, that we might learn and glean and understand and follow and um, just after who you are. Mm. We need that. Mm. We need it more than anything else. Mm. Your love is what I long for. Your who you are is what is all we need. Mm. I pray that this time would um, be set apart for you. Mm. And, um, and even in that, more and more, more and more time would be set apart for you, that we would eventually leave completely set apart lives for you. Mm. I pray for your way and your will. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sister. Well, you know, this are not teaching time, so it's, you know, it's time to share, to pray, to, to, to seek the Lord together if needed, you know, to, for counsel. <laughs> I hope that word is, is, is for in the right place, in the right ear, okay? So I'm mm -hmm. not be anyone for anybody and uh, i don't think god want us to do but as a spirit is a spirit of counsel you know the father's heart to to, yes. to much is in, in the in in the contest counsel you know the father counsel so you know so you eventually ended up partnership in counsel you know i teach you on the seventh spirit at that time my 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 understanding still a little bit fresh, you know, I, as I shared in the contest that it was new to me, you know, in the way of, you know, I didn't prepare. The Lord told me just go ahead and share, you know. So as years by, at this point, I, I have a better grasp of how things actually works, you know, so, so making sense to you, not all of it, but at least not much of it. <laughs> <laughs> I was appreciating your vision, you know, uh, somebody holding the menorah, you know, so talking with the same spirit, making sense to you, lead the way, you know, yeah. your body is a lamb onto my, my, your word is a lamb onto my feet, you know, so, and, uh, well, the word and it is embodiment and the operation of the seven spirit of God, if making sense, the word become flesh in a sense, you know, put into motion into purpose but that being said i i want to you to carry that contest in this light and this when i mentioned that word this contest so you know i mean understood as if uh, i'm talking about in other contests making sense to you sister yes yeah, so yeah hello are you there yes mm -hmm. yes sir mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, so my point is how you want to go about this. You feel free to share whatever. So the Lord put in your heart, or you know, you you feel certain thing. You know, understanding, have questions, stuff like that. As we shared before, if you have questions, feel free to ask. You know, so I hope I can answer them. So. Mm -hmm. Well, there's so many things, of course, I want to know. <laughs> so I have, to, <laughs> mm. I have to narrow it right on down. Okay. Um, uh, I guess the one thing that I have been thinking lately, I have been... Um, reading a ton of George Warnock, his books, and listening mm. to his sermons because I, I actually never in my life have read something that has helped so much my heart to understand things. Mm. Uh, so I've been super blessed by that. Mm. And um, just something that I read today was about uh, basically needing to to really know Jesus. Um, he, he talked a little bit about how there's a lot of things that happen that, 
you know, God can work in and he can, that he works, that he chooses to work through and he chooses to bless and all these things that are very true, but that there is, if there's a real knowing of, of Jesus and then there is a, you know, a deeper revelation that was, was intended for us Mm. to know. And I, and I, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, I don't want anything else. I don't want all this stuff that the Lord is willing to work through because we're so, you know, get off. Mm. He meant, he said it like, we just get off. We we find a good word and then we get off and we go with it, you know, Mm. instead of being thankful for the good word and and moving forward, we kind of be thankful for the good word and go off on a side, a side Mm. street or a sidebar, you know? Mm. And, um, I just, I'm so excited and hopeful that that is nothing that will happen. I, you know, after listening to so many wise people, you know, you and Tim included, and just seeing the purpose, um, you know, from creation until this very moment, and it all Mm -hmm. leading to a purpose God intended to be in relationship with his children. There's nothing more that I, I want to be focused on and want to move forward in and Mm. want to see and know and understand because I don't want to waste Mm. my time you know I don't want to waste time going off some side shoot or even things that don't matter there's no point and so Mm. I guess I just am really wanting to be encouraged on what that looks like really knowing you know the words of the lord he spoke to in this book i I just am amazed like this man i felt like had some chats with jesus because (laughs) the way that he goes about talking about it really opens my eyes and Mm. he was talking just about um the word of god like this the you know the spoken word um Mm. just how I can't even, I can't describe it because I'm not him, but just the beauty <laughs> in the fact that yeah. as, we, as we come to this place, you know, we'll, we can hear the word of God like Jesus did, it blows my mind, but I want to get to that point. So mm. the knowing of God is, is fascinating me, you know, in mm. knowing Jesus. So <laughs> that's kind of something exciting. <laughs> yeah, it is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting there, you know. So, always you want to appreciate those spirit field, uh, and uh, you know people who have in depth understanding, you know. So, and uh, you know, you, you know, most people ignore them, you know. So, yeah, that's good, but uh, really not grasping the substance what they're trying to convey, and. Um, I'm so excited to, for you to be excited with this writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bless the Lord. It's, you know, think about, it, you know, God bless the body of Christ, even in last century, with so amazing, amazing teachers. Mm-hmm. Yet we, we continue moving in different realm, you know, science, wonders, prosperity, gosh, for well, us. I hope I'm not sound critical, <clears throat> but anyway, I'm just saying, you know, those teachers are not hating from anybody, all right? So, in a sense, you know, so, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, it, it, but it's considered as a one brand a movement in the galleries of Christianity. That is uh, to sand, you know, so, mm-hmm. and, uh, Therefore, I'm excited and encouraged to hear you to see the difference. You know, that difference has to be made. Who is a peer, who is already more than a mixture, actually have a different motives. You know, people endorse the process in certain ways. There must be deep down in their, in their heart of heart, they know what they're doing. Makes sense to you, you know, so unless they're totally uh, misled or on not caring, you know, so certain people just don't care about the soul enough to make uh, an in-depth search, a fundamental f- research, uh, not searches, examination of the spiritual foundation, the spiritual vision. I use the word vision of the foundation because that, that, is, that is too criteric and simply or principally used to say, okay, yes, that man is teaching, that is man is doing ministry, but what is a foundation? You know, what is a spiritual foundation or the spiritual horse you try to build? What does the foundation look like? 
how he built that. And we know most the the the, the, the ministers or teachers say actually don't care about the foundation at all, you know? So just do whatever they feel right, the spirit led, as we call it. When you do foundation, there is a similar pattern, you know, you're getting weighed relationally, teaching wise, you know, ministry efforts wise, you just can't ignore it. Secondly, it's a vision, you know, vision is so important. Just think about the shooting error you have the wrong target, or your vision is not good enough to, to, to discern the real target. As much as you're shooting arrow all day long, you may hit and miss, but you can't say that it's the way how we shoot arrow, making sense to you, you know? So I think that is, or build a horse, you don't have a, a vision of what the horse look like. You don't even know where your bedroom is, living room is, you know, it's built, you know? And uh, what are you talking about? You know, God never does things in that kind of a manger of a spiritual input in people's lives, casually. You know, he made his word serious and a word discernibly holy, if you will. You know, it's it's always come with mighty testimonies, you know, if not intervention. And may making sense to you, you know, so making, I, I hope I'm making sense to you, you know, so, and, um, because that's a major, you know, so, and um, so two combined together, I think it's like a square, you know, you can literally measure people are building their spiritual lives, their spiritual service to God in, in the right way or not. I'm making sense to you, you know, so, and uh, to look at the, the difference of those, the ones you mentioned, you can see they always pay attention some pay attention more to a vision. Some may pay attention to build a foundation. You know, mm-hmm. so when you found the two together, which I hope in this age, this hour, with our generation, we have the capacity to appreciate the unified work in this too. Making sense to you, you know, so, and we have to, you know, or else there's no need to allow us to Talk about the family culture of God, you know, some fundamentals, discipleship, and building the house of God, restore Asian rooms, those kind of things. Making sense to you, you know, so, yeah, so, so I'm excited mm-hmm. with your excitement, so, so I'm, uh, I just uh, ask God continue to bring more than inspiration to you, but deep, in-depth understanding and commitment with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you ever have a problem with commitment. You might have a problem with a personal patience, but not commitment. (laughs) 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 There's a huge difference there, okay? You know, you understand my point, sister? You know, so yeah. (laughs) So don't blame yourself, you know, lack of patience. That thing to do with temperament thing, you know? So think about it, okay? John is quiet. It's John the Gospel. Uh, Just John the Apostle, I'm sorry, you know, (laughs) with Jesus when they were young. Peter was in, in, very impetuous, you know? <laughs> so, you know so, <laughs> make sense to you? The process mm-hmm. is different, you know? So John hung yeah. every word the Lord said, taking the heart, you know? He has, uh, he, he's, uh, he's patiently weighing out what the Lord told him, <laughs> making sense to you, you know? so, <laughs> But he's not that uh, adventurous, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> not willing to take off a uh, 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 from the from the rule, in a sense, right? So, you know, so, and uh, there lies Peter, uh, almost like uh, other spectrum of uh, what it means to be a good disciple, is we're eager to do the thing need to be done, you know? So yet without thinking through, you know? <laughs> making sense to you, you know? So okay. you're just thinking through too much, don't want to do anything improper, you know? Making a mistake, making a blunder. I'm not saying that the either one is good, but eventually they come to work together after the Lord departed from earth. And they have a such beautiful friendship, a unification. You think about how God does that, eh? Bring totally two person on two sides of the spectrum of personalities. Mm-hmm. Not just to the middle ground, rather totally write that off. 
LA we to the different place. That's what I'm saying to you. It means some. What you desire, what you're excited about, to know the Lord is I, I hate to use this word give people a false impression. Why is it having one message? The sound shit. What do you understand? Everything's about the sound shit. <laughs> the day for us. <laughs> I'm making sense to you. You know, so yeah. I have a lot mm-hmm. to talk, you know. So but uh, I want to hear the question, however. So if you have any question. You were talking about your reading, excited with the uh, Brother George Warnock and others writing on teachings. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear it, uh, sister. So go ahead. Mm. I think my question just has to do with, you know, I, I shared a little bit in this, the women's, actually not the women's meeting at all. I don't know. Are you on the, uh, the, I don't know what the, the app is called, but the women, the WhatsApp with the women that are on there? Are no, you part I'm of that not. or is it just the women? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm, I'm a um, dual summon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I shared a little bit, um, just something that the Lord, the Lord's really doing. Of course, it's an extremely good work, but it's a hard work as far as the taking out of all the yucky stuff that is inside me. Mm. Um, but he had, uh, explained something to me as about, you know, it's hard to explain. I'm trying to find, um, Um, I was trying to find out what I what what it was because I I, I feel like I need a little bit more help Often with it. Often time, I use a parable to describe when words or you, know, you know thoughts is not well organized uh, because a parable easily can illustrate a situation. I'm not proposing that to you. I'm saying if you have a hard time to express things, think about the story or the parable might be well, better described. Mm-hmm. I wrote it down. If you don't mind me reading it, I wrote yeah. it down in, yeah, in the uh, in the in the message with the women. So this is what I said. I said, okay. um, I think Prima maybe had shared something, um, or I had shared something that George Warnock had written. Mm. And I said, I just had a revelation in reading this. I feel like a veil was lifted in a sense in the world, meaning the enemy has falsified love to me it taught me just as if it was my teacher and i a schoolgirl, book open taking notes i fell for it hook line and sinker only now my only hope is knowing the truth about love god's love but it is but for me excuse me let me rephrase uh god's love for me but the charade has pacified me so many of us must untangle ourselves from the false and doctrine indoctrinated belief of love and find Mm. true love Mm. oh lord thank you for removing the blinders and the desiring truth deeper and deeper still i confess i only know a small portion of your love but i am ready to take off lies and receive you fully um that was something Mm. that the lord had just showed me and then he he continued on and he says um i had this dream the night before and um it was of all these old high school boyfriends that I had relationship with. And I woke up and I was like, ew, that's gross. I felt all those feelings I felt then. Fear of rejection, false behavior, trying to protect myself, desiring intimacy in all the wrong ways. I wondered why that was brought to my mind. I can see now in the search for love, I found the world and the lies of the world hardened my heart toward love. When Jesus came and loved me first, I said, yes, please. And then gave him my hard heart with only little cracks of softness. So that was just something that I shared because I feel like, you know, his his kindness leads to repentance and his love for us leads to, you know, obedience and and growth and discipline. And and, and, and it's the leading towards all these things that he wants for us in relationship with him. But Hmm. I'm like, 
thank you, Lord, for loving me. Here's my hard heart, you know, and, and, and I just feel like there needs to be a softening in a sense and an understanding more of his love so that I can, you know, give it back to him and give it back to those around me. It is, I sense that there was still a hardness of heart within me because of all the work the Lord is doing. What's that? I, I'm just great with you. I tried the lesson in. Oh, yeah. sorry. No. Um, anyway, so I just, I, uh, I, I know the Lord is, is working out the world of me and he's putting him, his, his spirit even more, you know, he's revealing that in me more. And just, I, 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 I feel like I don't know sort of like next steps into the knowing of him and the receiving and knowing of his love. So it's just so much deeper and, mm. and I don't want it to be shallow. Um, you know, I don't yeah. want to hold on to bits and pieces of him I, it, when he's offering me at all. He's offering everything yeah. to me, and I'm all, I'm just going to hold on to this little tiny piece. You know, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes we need a personal touch of the Lord in certain levels, you know? You know, He made us uniquely different in terms of to be affectionate, you know? So, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit philosophical sometimes, or, or being uh, presenting things objectively. The truth of the matter is, what are you talking about? You know, in my personal walk, I just don't, I'm not in the habit of, like to share my personal inner life. You know, you understand my point, personal testimonies, even. But I will tell mm -hmm. you, God is, is, is a, such a gracious, tender, loving God. I don't know the word God. I hope that in any way not discredit or glorify him by be saying he's a truly a friend and a father. Mm. Amen. I mean, can you imagine, sisters, there are times of, you know, I, I like you struggling, right? You, you know my story. I, I think, uh, uh, you know, many things I don't even aware of it. I'm struggling, and God revealed, you know, and it make it uh, so easy for me to work on mm -hmm. myself because then you can laugh for yourself. Mm. Oh, laugh off, you know, so, because that's silly, you know, look, you're silly. I, I hope that don't project you mm -hmm. activity or pressure on you. Okay, I'm just saying myself, you know, so and that is not mm -hmm. one time, you know, and that don't come easily to that place where you can just laugh over yourself, you know, for your silliness. In the spirit, I mean, you're preserved to God. It's not that you're done wrong, you know, or the silliness has anything to mm -hmm. do with saying or flesh or personal stuff. Making sense to you? You know, actually, in a way, you approach God or you feel stuck, not the rewarding, you're stagnant. And that's my point, you know, so... Then you look at it, you know, you look differently. I hope I, I I'm, I'm sorry to you in the general terms, but what I tried to see is through the years, especially in the beginning phase, God never compelled his love on me. I mean, he leave a palm trail for me to, to find his love. But when he reveals the love to me, it was supernatural, always supernatural. What I mean is that it's always touch the whole legs of being of me beyond my control. And I'm not talking about understanding or supernatural visitation, all those come actually understanding come much later what he did to me. Um, it's like, um, you know, in a dark room, and I'm not saying that gross dark or you're sophisticating. Sometimes it happened to me in early days exactly like that. I don't know. You feel that time. You're so desperate for some answer, am I? For some outlet. You feel sophisticating. Mm -hmm. and, and then God come wrong, open the door. You know, you know, you would think, you imagine the, oh, only I got out of this occasion. Only I got out of this sophistication. I was a little bit light. And I had a little bit of free air. That's good enough. Making sense to you? You know, so. Mm -hmm. And when God did, however, he opened the, the door. And I rung out the door. 
and you found the, the most beautiful garden you can imagine. Everything's full, aroma, full of life. Ian says my point is it's like it Ian says my point, you know, so it's not just have fear, mm -hmm. you know, it's born is the love, all his goodness. My my thinking is that you know your your ability to touch his goodness in that moment is very limited because such a sudden change. You know, I mean, how much you can appreciate as a, a present place, a sophisticated place, to settle your emotion down, really appreciate the beauty of the garden. It's, you just, you don't have the ease. You don't have the pace. You don't have the leisure to do it. You don't know what you give it, right? You just overwhelmed by free air, overwhelmed by the beauty of the color, overwhelmed by the light, you know, the sunlight. You understand my point, you know, so it's mm -hmm. such a, so it take a lot of time for you to recognize those things are, are taken, I mean, are granted. They're not so, the, 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 as impactful and different and meaningful it is, it does not, it's not the mean stay what a God wants you to, to enjoy in the garden. I mean, it's it's new when in the beginning, but then every day of the day, it's 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 it's, it's norm. You should expect to have a fear in the garden. You should have a sunlight. You should have all the brilliant, the flood, the colors, everything. Right? That's taken. Mm -hmm. That's what it means to be in the garden. Now, then, when you settle in that one down, that impactful time down, well, normally young believers or Let's not use the word shallow. It's just, they have not grabbed the reality, the settlements called the rest in sonship. I mean, literally a rest in sonship. That's where the mistake is. The praise God, the input of God's love is that impactful, that life changing. It's all true. And they call it the first love. You know, that is a, uh, to my understanding, 99.99% of the people said that's the first love. When you come to God, He did that to you, you, you know, you're wrong by His love. Now, that is true. I mean, that's happened to you in the first light experience, am I? You never had that before. Making sense to you, you know, that's for sure. In terms of sequential order, that's so true, you know? It's a superior, so overwhelming, so life-changing. So we're taking, for so sure. But I would propose you, that is not the kind of first law eventually God wants you to set on, which you never supposed to disappear with the first law. Making sense to you? First law was not, not supposed to separate from your life. Actually, in those mode understanding, he actually have no touch of what love actually is yet, because it's only mm -hmm. a contrast from your past lack or past. Uh, your, your parameter, your reference point, is your own experience, am right? Especially mm -hmm. without God's love, and God love cannot be referenced by your own feelings. I mean, your own past projection. Mm -hmm. so the baseline has to be different when talking about the first love, basically. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that's, that's been where the problem the, right there. <laughs> yeah. Where, where the song life begins to really come in, that's, that's why Christ becomes the source of all, everything. Mm -hmm. You have to elevate and withdraw from yourself from that than the calculation, that than the way of thinking to look at Jesus as uh, he said he is wisdom. You know, wisdom here is not make you wise. His wisdom is how God in mind, thoughts, is a way, mm -hmm. is embodied. We, you know, human beings by posture, by default, is very much self-serving and self-centered. Mm -hmm. Not selfish per se. Okay, you can be a hero, you can die for things. 
but it's just our own version of what it means to be a hero, worth, worth to be devoted to something. So it would be very soul wrenching and so painful for many to really withdraw from themselves to project another way of life and be disciplined to it. If uh, am I making sense to you in this light, you know, so mm -hmm. well, um, hold on the garden and the impact of life of a sonship. Let me tell you another story. Let's see this young boy in school. Let's just normal school system. Don't worry about it. But if, if a young boy never engaged to be a sports person, I mean, let's not teamwork. Whatever. It's not don't complex. Just let's see he. He's gonna run the race to be uh, one competing Olympic, am I right? So let's forget about all the religious pressures or the Bible teaching. It's just common sense, okay? Discussion. I'm making sense to you, you know. So, mm -hmm. and what happened if the young boy don't have that kind of desire or engagement? His idea of a discipline of uh, setting himself apart for something. And to achieve something in a certain way is very much self-centered. And let's imagine he never have other similar disciplines, okay? He says my point. It's impossible for him to quickly shake him off, said, okay, I'm a sportsman, I need to compete. Uh, you know, there's another set of a totally different requirement for me, what it means to be disciplined, to, to enjoy responsibly, have a goal. Making sense to you? You know, if you're talking is a student's body or few friends totally ignore or have no idea what that look like in their life. I mean, there's certain school don't have those programs like I grew up, am right? So and that's my point, you know. So when we're talking about self-discipline, when we talk about the winning of prize, when we're talking about set yourself aside for something that you want to hear for. You have no see about it. You don't decide how this getting done, basically. You can, you can enjoy and exercise your will in it and achieve it excellent, it, but it's a ball game. It's a game set up by itself. You don't have a much to say about it. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Am I right? So you, so mm -hmm. you see, our young mind was said, Sure, it's about life. Sure, if we don't have this picture, we don't understand this discipline. Oh, I don't never, if it's clear, present to me, but I don't want to do it. Even I do it, I, I fight against it. You know, whatever their undergirding is, is, well, you know what? Whatever that life look like, it cannot control me. It cannot claim me. It cannot hold ownership to me, if I'm making sense. Making sense to you? You know, making sense to you, mm -hmm. you know, so you just, yeah. some quarter, some way you reserve yourself said, you know what, I'm going to do my life regardless what this game had to say about me or define, uh, lay, lay claim to my life. And uh, therefore, you can never really be a happy sportsman. Even you win the first prize, you still not you may be talented sportsman and highly glorified a sportsman, but you never was a sportsman for that game what it intended to lay out or designed for. If I'm making sense to you. Making sense to you, you know? So, making yeah. sense to you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at this as Jesus' life for us. Most of us look in Jesus all project you here from our personal needs. What we need him for. It, it doesn't mean we abuse him or mistreat him or receive him wrong. We have those decent needs. And he lovingly, graciously satisfied us. I mean, he sent you, you know, so back, back to this point. Now maturity, however you want to know who Jesus is, really who he is, mm -hmm. really what a God, why he is the son of God. <laughs> I mean, what it means he's the son of God in the Father's light, sight, I'm sorry, making sense to you, you know? So it's like a, 
a, a young land in the school said, uh, finally said, oh, you know what? All the course, all the disciplines have somehow me oriented. I had the right to decide, am I making sense to you? You know, so, but now I decided I'm going to start be trained as a sportsman in, in running the race. Hmm. You know, I, I set myself aside for it. And I know I cannot dictate any term to this process. You know, it can only dictate to me, you know, and he not seeing it as a burden, as a robbery now. He actually seeing it as a higher realm, a higher will engagement of life. It's not the enhancement to his former life or more the Christian life. He said, I give up all other things that distract me. Oh, not satisfied to me. I got this. You know, I fully dead to this. You know, that's my point. You know, so he would, he would go to the coach to beg him to teach him, you know, to go to the <coughs> good people who have sponsored him, beg them to sponsor him. He had the running trail. He was so happy he can run on the trail, you know, because but the, somehow he's the calculation of what it means to be set aside for something is it's not to impress others or even impress himself. It's just there's a vision of what it means to be a sportsman. You know, he, he just said, that's me. I want that. Now, I mean, Songs you think seem to challenge you all that a little bit, but actually, I want to encourage you. The mm -hmm. sonship spirit in you is a crying out to be the true source man. And you, you, you just you can't settle your life almost can hear you to so not be a real song. I mean, can sense you, you know, mm -hmm. so he is the. Um, you just being taught wrong, sister. Sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not your fault, you know. I've been taught wrong, you know. How many jungle had to fight through to get where I am? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you got, you know, brother like George Walnut, you're like, oh. That's yeah. so refreshing, you know? Yeah, you yeah. So long. You said, oh, man, am I lost my way? Am I going to die here, you know? So <laughs> nobody has seen this way before. Suddenly mm -hmm. said, oh, wow, 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 wow. I'm not crazy. You know? I'm not crazy. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> that making sense here? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not crazy. That's good. <laughs> 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 so the desire in you is the growing of a sonship in you. Mm -hmm. It is not about, I don't think you and Justin at the end of the day said it's about doing this, doing that, take care of life in this, that. I think the depths of your heart, the real desire of your heart is, is to be a son, to do the Father's will, you know, mm -hmm. to feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's so evident in you, Justin. I mean, when anybody comes to judge you otherwise, or yourself, sometimes see yourself in different color, or you two seeing each other in different color. Well, you need to recognize that's that's, that's a false spectrum. Amen. You know? Yes. That's, that's not who you are. That's not what's really you passionately about. And that's my point. That's what's why you you seeking God, serving Him. Now, if that is always, you know, get the right spectacle on your eyes, you know, so look things straightforward, I mean, <laughs> clear, mm -hmm. you know, and then he, things is fall into place, sister, you know, you can't build a street of pass or even if the, the standard, the spectacle is crooked, you know, and that's my point, you know, if the, mm -hmm. the line you lay out, you know, sometimes you have you to plumb something, you use the, uh, we used to, I help my dad and building houses. Sometimes we 
get the plum I said, am I so under certain level? Am I in the measured out? Then you, we use this uh, this string, you know, tied so tight, mm. like a straight line, you know. Then and uh, chalks on it, you know. Then yeah. I used yeah. I used to enjoy it is a pull it back, boom, you know. Then yeah. Hit the <laughs> yeah. Line on the stones, am I so? Yeah. You know, you understand my point, you know, then the street line. Good, yeah. You know? Now, I used to help my dad because, you know, you build a long wall. What happened on each corner, your hands are really tight, very tight. And right, young boy don't know the importance. So you just said, oh, that's good mm-hmm. enough, you know. <laughs> so, you, you know, says my point, you know, so you <laughs> impatient about it. <laughs> and dad has to come again to crack me, said it. Boy, you know, <laughs> be serious with that, you know. So, <laughs> so he told me, if you don't do right, everything will be cropped, you know. It's going to be. So he he would ask me to do it again, you know. So making sense here, you know. So the tight word tight, you know. It's not we don't have those uh, tools those days. It's just. Basically, uh, we're hard tied for the young young hand, you know. So, making sense to you, you know. So it's not easy. I mean, it's take a lot of strength to do it, and uh, holding the stick back stuff like that, you know. So, but I I, I did a few times, you know. So, in the later days, I recognize how interesting those things, um, you know, relevant to life principles. You know, so the other day, team were talking about <laughs> he built a, a thing in the trailer. You know? His dad come around and said, "Hey, it's not even. I can see it." <laughs> no, I didn't have to Well, perception, you know, the orientation of uh, things. Now here you, you can see just in the you. Deep down in your heart, you love God. You want to know God's love. You pursue God, but. The orientation thing, the, the starting point of your life is absolutely there's no challenge. See, you don't do that, you don't want to do that. Well, the devil will taunt you, yourself will blame you, say you're not wanting doing that, that's why you have all these problems. That's a lie. So, mm-hmm. you don't condemn your heart, and this is my point that's a lie. Mm-hmm. I think that's a major struggle for you, sister. Yeah, yeah. You know, you need to be released from that place. You know, says my point, you know, so there's no condemnation for you in that place. You just don't know how you, your orientation, I'm talking about the, the lie, you know, the, the foundation you build might be wrong, but it never said that you don't want to build a house in your life. Mm-hmm. You don't want God to dwell in your life. Making sense to you, you know, that's, that's just terribly wrong. That's not the case. But uh, I hope I'm making sense to you, you know? So, yeah. So, yeah. Now, then what is the foundation? If you want to start, start really building the foundation, you got to know the Lord is a pattern. I mean, the Lord is a starting point. And learn to dismiss those try to teach you somehow you are the starting point. Okay? I mean, it's simple. And very, very important for understanding, for example, the key concept of Christian walk and practice, what love is. You would think, oh, no, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> now, after many years, many discussions, you suddenly recognize you you have some some um, maybe imperfect ideas or misled ideas. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't. I hope I don't add adjective to your to your way. Okay, so <laughs> you tell me. You know mm-hmm. how you describe it. So it's 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 not right. It's it's a for sure. It's a wield, as you were said, making sense to you. You know so. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, why? Why? It's because the orientation of the foundation of faith are taught different. Uh, uh, informed, educated are different. Like the high school boy. He has never really understand, studied the game, what it entails. What it means set apart mm-hmm. for it. 
So in his idea, he's a set apart to have a game to play a role, play a standards, you know, get trained. He had he thought he did all that. You know, for example, the first cons- uh, imagery I open I use about the first law. Get out the in cage place, breezy air, you experience that. Nobody can argue with you, you don't experience that. But if one have an unhealthy idea what the first love is, when he will try to tell you, he knows the first love. You know, he, he will tell you in those modes, he will challenge the one who have peace and rest and really enjoy the garden. Said, hey, why you don't feel God's ear? You know, so <laughs> why you don't just breathe hard? You know, why mm-hmm. don't you just. Just want to paint a picture, or shoot a movie of the colorful garden. Why? Why are you you walk around? You know, like like a tear, take a take a, this easy shock in the garden. I'm, what do you waste your life for? Let's make a movie of the garden. Tell everybody how beautiful it is. Let them know this <laughs> this liberation of life. <laughs> Well, his idea of first love going to to make a lot of pee, uh, <laughs> pressure challenge to you, the one who actually walking in first love in different way, you know. Yeah, this is my point, you know. So, mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. I encounter all a lot of people like that, you know. I mean, they they almost like try to impress you. They knows better God's love than you do. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's like childish. To even yeah. think like that, yeah, because no one can mature in the Lord without His love. No right. one. That's that's just that's one plus one kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you say I'm more mature in God than you, you don't you don't tell me I don't know God's love better than you. That's just like are you killing me? Do you know what the maturity really means? You know. So, <laughs> but we have those foolish ideas flying around, you know, young people, or whatever. You understand it's my point, you know. So just don't know what they're talking about in the, the day. You know? so, <laughs> but it causes a lot of confusion for us. Mm-hmm. Causes a lot of kind of pressure to us, to you especially. So when ready to mature into love, you know, making sense to you, you know. So what a um, that's a lot to talk about when we talk about love, you know. I'm more mm-hmm. in a general terms. Love had been matured with wisdom. I often state this. Without godly wisdom, you really don't know how he loves you. I mean, it has to be enlightened. Yeah. Had to grow. I mean, sister, am I? So we, we have experiences, this simple fact, two of us. Few years, am I right? In the beginning, relationship, different light, different, uh, different engagement. But today, I think the Lord will, who I am, in Him, and my heart towards you or others, are so different than the first time we met all through the years. You know, even times making sense to you. You know, so I mean. I'm not projecting this to be somebody. I'm just saying there's a there's a perception there matured through the years. Am I right? Making sense to you? You know, so and yeah. you know you you won't allow me. And you know I I you know I care about you guys. Making sense to you? You know, so I mean I, there was never mm-hmm. a problem with that. But the the wisdom, the understanding how this relational dynamic in terms of love went under, how went under. What to get in the Lord, substantiated only when your understanding are open up. Only when you know who I am, allow me to know who you are in the Lord more. Making sense to you? I'm making mm-hmm. sense to you. That can only happen mm-hmm. like that. That it should happen like that. I mean, what are we talking about? If it's not happen like that, I suspect you really don't know what it means to have a, a, a deeper, a more mature love, making sense to you. Mm-hmm. So my proof to this, to your person, using our example, using 
you know, then how God matures song in the sense. I mean, love has to be nurtured, substantiated through wisdom. On the other side, wisdom, wisdom, uh, it's with wisdom, love can be expressed. It's through wisdom, love can be increased. If through wisdom, love can be powerful, exercised, making sense to you, making sense to you, you know, so you are your mom. When you're young, you, you love the baby just born into arms, you know, nurtured him all day long, and right, making sense to you, and that's my point, you know, so, but they become, uh, let's see, five to six years old, and they know how to have a little awareness, how to handle relationship, in the family, how to talk to you guys, how to, to talk to others, am I right? The shooter carries himself in a little bit of awareness, get just kind of through a face, cry all day long, you know, or in whatever occasion they just run into this, want to talk to you, you know, so for that, for simple things, am I right? They, they, whether they tell them to do that or they go naturally go to it, you know, just, you know, they're aware that life will carry to them there. My point, is then you how you love them from being a baby in your arms to a point of five years, six years old, begin to open up to uh, that life is more than about yourself or more than about you guys, am I right? As parents, mm-hmm. children together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just open up. Oh, wow, they're friends, there's others, you know, so they have a role in my life, you know, so now their lives. I mean, you, you, you will never burden a younger one, one year, two years old, with those expectations of all things. Am I right? You love them unreservedly, wholeheartedly, but they have no expectations. They have to know something. They have mm-hmm. to be here in certain ways. Making sense to you? You don't. That's you know. So certain parents. I mean, it's a cry in the night. You just wake up. You you complain, but you 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 know you can't blame them. You know, so I mean, making sense to you. You know, you may discipline them in a certain ways. It's, you know, certain bad habit in terms of crying can be changed. But you will never said it's his fault. He should know better. He can't stop doing that and tomorrow. You know, so making sense to you. You know, okay. it's just uh, you don't apply that expectation wisdom on this child. Then he's five, six years old, grew more and more your expectation on how this child to be loved by you. And then through his life, life expressed the love back to you and others, it comes with expectation now of wisdom. You know, you should know better, you know, who it is, who <laughs> Gila, you know, so you should, you should pay attention to that. So let's not do that next time. This is why. You know, so it making sense to you. You should not talk to back to me a certain way. Or you should not ask things, certain gifts in certain intensity anymore. You know, that's my point, you know. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> that's nothing to do <coughs> with not loving them. It's only you begin to exercise a, a better expectation of wisdom with a mature love. Now transact this two back to yourself, sister. If a false Christianity or false teachers or false perception you develop in your own mind about love, how this works, am I? You know, if it's not appropriated, then you needed to use just like the baseline I'm talking about, all the the merging line, right? The foundation, <laughs> the foundation of the vision. Okay, you know, the foundation of the vision. It's easy to discern those are false teachings or mixture teachings or dis- disruptive teachings, you know? Not helpful, am I right? So, you know, yeah. for example, there will be a, a great preacher full of passion, full of zeal, not dismiss his impact and his, his genuineness in expressing how God touches life. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, he has visitation. He's God that touch him, you know. 
He follows the Holy Spirit day and night. He heals the souls and people. And to stand on the stage, I'm well overwhelmed. I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel God is working him and appreciate God is working through him and working his life. Absolutely. I'm a 100%. I may be better. I'm 200%. Better than anyone else, you know, in the audience. Yeah. To cheer him on, excited about him. But when he talking about this is how you should do this, everyone. If you don't have it, you don't know God's love. Or you're not mature. Uh, you don't have a passion for the Lord enough. I was said, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. The reality, I know more about God love than you. And I have that confidence. I need to be taught. You need to be disciple in the wheel of sonship grows. <laughs> How to know God's father's love. How to know the, the Lord's love. And right? Because what are you talking about? It's a baby talk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's no, that's no pride. That's just like simple. Mm -hmm. You know, God, and look at the young, young plant, you know, the words of plant, what it need, you know? So <laughs> you need to have that confidence. In the Lord, if you truly got established, he's also you know, so, <laughs> that's your basic job. Also, you, you, you're starting nowhere, right? So, you know, so <laughs> what means to be a pastor? What means to lead God's house to build them up? That's the basics, you know, <laughs> to give a basic assessment where spiritual seasoning, <laughs> spiritual mode is, you know, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the basics. Listen, Jesus mm -hmm. will do that. No either way. You know, he won't say to Peter, slow down a little bit. <laughs> 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 making sense to you, you know. Mm -hmm. So he will yeah, making sense to you, you know. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thomas, catch up a little bit. You know? <laughs> 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 I'm just a little bit teasing you, but I, you know, so why yeah, yeah. we allow those things and the super pressure to us? Because you see, our foundation is not secured enough. Our vision not clarified for us enough. And those are deeply profound related to sonship. Mm -hmm. How you practice love. Amen. Hallelujah. Make it sense to you? You know, so, and those people and exchange <laughs> today's environment extreme pressure to us you know mm -hmm. extreme pressure to us yeah and sometimes through it we, we misjudge others yeah you know i mean come on sister making sense to you or else our relationship will be in a better place i believe if not those distractions <laughs> so, yeah <laughs> But let's blame no one, you know. This God knows how to deal with us, you know. Right. So, yeah. I hope I said enough on this topic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else on your part? Words to talk or words to share? I don't think so. <laughs> I gotta yeah, chew we're... this up. I gotta chew this this wisdom up for a bit now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're a worldwide sister. I don't I don't care what I just say about you, but you're a worldwide sister. You know, wisdom flew and worked through your heart intuitively. Amen. Hallelujah. Intuitively. Listen, I have something to share. I think I mentioned certain things. I want to talk to you about God's love. His love is very tender, affectionate. You know, I, I have a lot of testimony on this. It's like I can write a whole, a whole book, you know, but I can't. <laughs> so I just don't have time. <laughs> God done some serious miracles in my life to change me, you know. So I know what you mean. I really know uh, the heart in your heart. What it means. You know, uh, I was the other day I was talking to Noah about this. 
It said a couple of days ago. You know, I, my heart, I feel so cold on particular occasions. God just come in, you know? I remember my heart was like a stone, am I? You know, I was mm. talking to him. Finally, I found the picture. His heart, like a uh, encaged by China, you know, like rocks, you know, all the rocks. Yeah. Make it sense to you? You know, so yeah. one time my heart fell on me, literally fell on me, physically fell on me, and God hand come into my chest and crack it and heart. I mean, all those, you know. Uh, shelf, am I? This is this is hard in the shelf, am I? So yeah. I can hear literally, I can hear it cracking. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so cracking my heart. You know, then I'm not dying. You know, uh, rewired. I mean, he literally cracked my heart. After that, I know that he saved my life. I know that his supernatural abilities are real. I begin to to really fascinated about this God. I mean, <laughs> you had the God on me. I my my journey with the Lord is is a is a different one. Okay, I don't follow the same it's a common mode. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> uh, so yeah. After that, I mean, God gave me the ability to move in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, all spectrum of the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you will. And uh, then, but I don't know his love at all. I don't know sonship at all. I mean, literally nada. <laughs> That's just fun. I have my idea is this is wonderful God, is a creator, is soaring, in control, is mighty king. Well, I can just serve him, man. You know, I can take him my life to really just do whatever he wants me to do. There's no other purpose for me. You know, I'm 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 the guy he picked up on the roof side, you know. <laughs> and when they want to use me, here I am. This is my mindset. You know, I remember these days I said to people, if God wants me the doorman and never raise up uh just Absolutely joyful to be a doorman because doorman, you know, you should be happy when people step on you, you know. So, <laughs> not just com- not complain, you're supposed to be happy people can step on you. you know? so, that's your job, you know. So, <laughs> so, so that's my picture of the doorman. <laughs> if God wants me a doorman to be stepping on, well, so be it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, foolish, but I, well, I was a passionate, you know. I, I want to do everything God wants me to do. Yeah. 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 Amen. And um, I never wanted to take a lead position anywhere. I just wanted to touch on, attach to some godly ones, you know, doing God's work. Mm-hmm. Let me be your helper, you know. <laughs> Let me be just your helper. I shall not hold around, do something for you. And God is using will, I'm happy, you know, so I'm doing something for God, you know, so <laughs> that's not humble, that's, that's what's where I'm my life was, you know, so I mean, making sense to you, you know, mm-hmm. it's literally mm-hmm. who I am, so I mean, nothing, I'm, I mean, that's what it is, you know, so I'm not to share that to anyway, that's just my life reduced to such a place, anything I do, God is honor to me, it's a joy to me. You know, so I don't know, I have desires. My life is wasted anyways. <laughs> Make it a little bit fruitful, meaningful. Whoa, wow, you know, so I can do something. You know? so, <laughs> not with my life wrong, but that's where I was. But, you know, and that's, that's not good enough for God. I don't understand it. He just cut me off from that. Yeah. Totally. And I was miserable. Mm-hmm. I thought, what's wrong with me? What's wrong? You know, <laughs> I tried everything, you know, I tried to do it right, you know. I had not reserved anything yeah. for myself. Yeah. You know, people falsely accuse me, criticize yeah. me, or say all kinds of things that I, I don't think I deserve it. You know? so I don't complain them, you know. I'm literally not complaining. You know, I said, well, they just don't know better, you know. I don't care about what they say, you know. So, but, but God, why? You cut me off. 
from godly ones, some people I love, care about. I think you're going to spend the rest of my life with. And I, I, it didn't get through on me for a long while. And Tim was gracious, you know. It's 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 worth supporting in those days. More than um, with my physical needs, actually, were supporting emotionally, you know, so spiritually. But he's no helper to me, you know. So he yeah, only sympathize with me, you know. And uh, I, I, I'm not saying that he's not helping. I'm, uh, that's not my point at all. I just don't understand the inner struggle I have. You know, he's not involved, and I can share with him. You know, so the, it's it's people I care about, which we all know and care about. So and things nobody knows about me, and then the struggling with. I propose that something go through. Might not be able to find somebody to talk about. You know, if you talk about it, we might just including me, only touch on the surface level. You know, it's not a real deal. Even we can give you shed some light, but the inner range of your life, the substance what you're going through. I don't think even you yourself knows what you're going through. The growing of the spirit, the growing of sonship. I'm making sense to you, you know, I have a diagnosis for that, yeah. but I, I can't because it's, it's not related to a sub, substance of the details of life. It's everything to do with the season. The power mm -hmm. of God's life is expanding and the, it's doing something with you, basically. Making sense to you, you know? So it's not feeling the bill or the understanding of past. All the people around you try to explain away, you know? So the, we can't. The growing inside of you belong to yourself, you. You can't even share with others. I uh, making sense? It's not that they don't care or you, you don't want to. It's just impossible. God made it impossible for that to happen. And I hope, sister, in that realm, in that, you, you have a settlement with that fact. And that's my point, you know. So it is not a wilderness journey to say it's actually the way how God, you know, when you forge something in the crossbow, he has to add the pressure to it. He has to set up you apart for it, you know. And the heat the pressure in the formation of this thing that he delight to produce, it has to be in that environment. It cannot be released until it is done. You see my point, you know? So God sometimes he knows how to fashion our soul to a better place where he wants to be. He does that to us. And it's no fault of anyone. It's, it's a soaring hand. Mm -hmm. It's a soaring power. His mighty hand is power, us, basically. So let's see uh, where I was. So after this, a short of while, and in this midst of things, there was a pouring, and God sent a lady to me, you know, so a wonderful mother, very humble, pure hearted. Short to short is when she prayed for me with great passion, she began speaking the Father's voice, changed her voice, literally be like a mad talking, you know. But she's a mother figure to me. Wow. I call her mom. She speaks like a father. Yeah. You know, it's a strange wow. phenomenon. And she holds this in her hand before my chest, crying, weeping, shaking me up, holding her head, said, Hey, this is your heart. This is a new heart for you. I don't see anything. So my heart was so hard and like a stone, you know, like a cold, you know? I mean, literally, I can feel the coldness in my heart in my chest. And she holds his head. I was, my, I'm just resisting. I know she loves me. And I was a full of the Holy Spirit, by the way, those days. I mean, the spirit powerful for a week on me. I mean, I don't sleep. I don't eat much those days. So in the middle of this, you know, strange. God can do strange things for a man. <laughs> and uh, so she's holding there. I said, what in the world? There's nothing in your hand. You know, look at this, look at God, I love you. He's speaking the voice, man. I said, what do you mean? You know, you, you don't speak like a man, you know? So, you know, so, I mean, who are you? He just changed the personality, everything. She was a gentle, loving lady. She said, I don't speak to people. 
I mean, it's just loud, you know, we're forceful. I was never see that about her. And I said, well, this is mm-hmm. weird. I want to take away. Yeah, I, I want to run away, you know, but I can't. She, she, I just continue. I was word dubious, word totally displayed me. And uh, she shake my shoulder again, again, finding it. You receive. God allows you. I, he allows you. And I allow you. You know, to change the tune, you know. Would you receive my love? I'm not sure. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, mean, you know, I don't know you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea he's my father that time. I was crazy. I mean, mm. Tom and the faulty foundation. <laughs> yeah. Nobody told me he's a father mm. to me. Mm. Nobody even cared about the Holy Spirit. The people I met they don't even believe in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when I first yeah. baptized by the Holy Spirit, before I get a baptized, confess Jesus Christ, and I don't dare to tell people about I get baptized because nobody believe it, and, and nobody would believe later. A day when I talk about I got baptized in my own quarters by God, <laughs> went to heaven, three days almost dead, and come back and speaking in tongues, preaching the gospel in tongues to mirrors mm. angels in my bedroom, you know. <laughs> mm. And I'm not believing Jesus at that time. Wow. Yeah. I don't believe he's the son of God. Wow. So you're talking about uh, <laughs> that those doesn't feed the bill of Christian doctrine. And when I walk in those and people are talking about this or that, I'm just like, yeah, you, you all good, explainable. And it seems you understand the Bible better than me. For sure you do. Because I don't know the Bible. But that's just as it just doesn't work for me, you know. So I mean, you understand how much I had to struggle through, sister, you know. And people said, yeah, God the world of baptized, then you can receive the Holy Spirit. Like people I respect, David Prince. Speak like that, you know? I mean, I mean, I don't know. He uh, actually David Prince not really uh, is a major way. Actually, David Prince helped me to release it. I think he has a similar experience almost. Oh, wow. You know how joyful I was when I heard people had those kind of experiences? Their Prince is a, a get to know God experience of long like mine. You know, long like mine, highly intellectual, highly unbelieving, supernaturally gripped by the Holy Spirit, that everything falling, falling apart, you know? We, we don't know who we are anymore, you know? What in the world happened to me? Who am I? Anyway, being said that, so finally she put the two hands, you know, said, put, push the heart into my chest. Said, here, I'll give it to you. And uh, when it touched my chest, I withered to the ground and my star stopped, stopped beating. Okay, that's a word overwhelming. That all things hell broke loose in that fellowship. I eventually set apart, and I don't have time to really think you through what's happened to me. Do you understand mm-hmm. my point? People are a little bit ugly to me. Oh, on, on, for list. And uh, so a lot of wound, you know, deep wound, personal wound, personal struggles. I don't blame people per se, but those times you just can't help, you know, thinking, what's wrong with yeah. this guy? What's wrong with me? And I stuff like that. Yeah. And um, finally you settled because God has all this prophesying to be cut off or set apart. So finally, mm. okay, if I have to do this, no friends, nothing to do in the world, we'll just in this little place, so be it. I, I got to know God, you know, I got to move on. So making sense to you, you know, so. And yeah. that's when God began to teach me the Bible of the sonship. I mean, he was a supernatural sister. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no materials, no books. I don't fellowship with people. I understand that's my point, a few friends talk to, but it's like, when I talk to them, I talk to the revelation I got, the old 
they were gracious to me, you know, they know my heart, they know me, mm -hmm. but they, they, we can't click, you know, they don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, you understand my point, you know. So I was like, "Wow, okay," you know. So that was a very, very, but they're gracious people. They are good people to me. Without them, I don't know. I can't go through that season, you know. So they mm -hmm. know I love God. They know God that can take hold of me. They never deny that. That is very supportive to me, you know. But they don't know what I'm going through, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading the Bible, understanding the Bible, totally different. Even challenging to the theology, to the to the ideas, you know. So they don't want to make it. I mean, some helpful, but in overall, they don't know what I'm going through because those days, I'm mainly moving in the prophetic gifts uh, uh, with spiritual understanding. See, and that's my point. My gift is we're prophetic those days, even today. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't make any sense, you know, prophetic people, it's running everywhere, they don't, they don't have a thing, you know, they don't, you don't know what they're talking about, you know, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> like I am, remember, I, like this, I see that in you, you know, I recognize that, it's very difficult for the person to have it, because sometimes things yeah. get a hold of you, you have no idea what's going on, you know, but you know it's God, yeah. that's all you know, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then, so I understand the burden, you know, for that, that disconnect, you know, so in a sense, understanding what the, what the gift carried you, where it is, making sense to you, you know, so personal understanding I'm talking about. And uh, so it's crazy, you know, and I remember to a point when the brother has the grace, his word grace, he said, God basically, God told me he can teach me. He still continue to try to, to make him so available to me, you know, in every way. But eventually my prophetic drive him crazy. He just said, you know, I'm, I'm not a prophet. I don't know how to interpret your vision dreams. So let me introduce somebody else. So if I had to say, you know, there's a prophet, stuff like that. See, he, he's very helpful in my walk. And consider my spiritual father, you know, still today. Uh -huh. So, yeah. but talk about this, still they don't understand. They operate in the old framework, if you will. You know, so for example, when talking about the kingship, priesthood, there will be red flag for them a little bit, you know. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. kingdom yeah. made red flag for them, you know. So, making sense to you, yeah. you know. So, yeah. Um, I mean, so, but those things that begin to open up for me, you know how to handle it. I can know how to handle it. You know, I don't have a George Gwanak's books to tell me. <laughs> so, 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 anyway, in all this, I struggled. And God gave you a lot of, this is relevant to you because you're asking the point for love. In this time, my heart began really seeking God. I began to really get a hold of sonship. But God continually would lead me up, go somewhere. He treated me as a song, sister. I mean, literally, it's a song. I'm, I'm not I'm not of theology. I'm of the supernatural visitation. I would be sitting between the Father and Jesus and be taught in between them. Wow. Nine, nine after nine. <laughs> wow. Jesus, Jesus would lead me somewhere, show me all kinds of things. I don't know. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. He, he lead me somewhere. And I saw Jesus talk to the Father always mm -hmm. with such a satisfaction. <laughs> wow. Such, 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 such pride. And you drive me a little bit teary, you know? It's just like, yes. Father, this this is my beloved brother. <laughs> mm. This this is this this is my brother. Your song. And he would sit in there all day long. Just have the father. Enjoy the conversation I have with the father. Wow. He's just sitting there, smile, node. <laughs> it's just like he don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I mean, have you, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm a super witness sister. I, to me, this is nothing to do with experience. It's uh, the love of God. The, the realness of assumption. And the realness of cries of friendship. The realness of the gospel. You know? mm -hmm. The Father. I mean, if... If experience is not good enough, God sent vessel to the vessel to confirm the message you're teaching me. I mean, I'm, they don't know what they're doing actually most of the time. Mm -hmm. It was just sent yeah. to me. You know, that's my point. Just, so, so this is very healing for me and very satisfying to me. It's built my confidence back to a point that I know who I am as a son. So my point at this time of loving God is a father, still not God anymore, whatever you want me to do, am I? In a sense, my point, you know, father, yeah, yeah. whatever you want me to do. Right. I would yes. think that's good enough. So I would tell mm. you, it's not a level of love. <laughs> <laughs> I would do mm -hmm. everything to please you, you know? I would never do anything <laughs> not pleasing to you, you know? I don't want to do it, let me do it, you know? And says my point, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that's very interesting. Then I moved to the desert. Something happened to me one day. I was driving the road and saw the sun, you know, with this chrono, you know, a circle around like a rainbow, you know, gray sky, which I look at it continually. And the sun begins like arrow, shooting arrow, you know, the sun became lightable, you know. He directed my chest. Well, that's why I'm amazed by your recent vision. Seeing in the body Christ, uh, there was an area on the left shoulder or something like that, which is a, the area of the heart. Am I making sense to you? You know, so, yeah. and, and I don't think anybody mm -hmm. knows anything except the Holy Spirit, and He speaks through you, sister. That's why I have confidence and freedom to talk to you about this, since I'm talking about the heart, not the mind, mm -hmm. not even your spirit. We continue to confuse two things as one thing. No, everything God does is through the heart. It's the embodiment of your, your being, the orientation of your being. It's, it's a place where the insu force your spiritual expression, your spiritual being, your soul being, your came to be. I'm making sense to you. Yen says my point. It's like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's a fountain head of your being in different realms. It's from the heart, you know, you're in a person in this world. I'm, I'm not talking about metaphysically. I'm talking about character, uh, personality. The answer is my point, you know, so, you know, so, I mean, a dog is dog, a, a tiger is a tiger, a lion is a lion. They're different. And is there something inside you decide that? Mm -hmm. In a different tiger, different dogs, different kind of character. I mean, there's something inside it, decide that. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Your spiritual mm -hmm. being, your soul being, if you will, your there, there are three levels of our being. I'm just thinking about the three quarters, uh, three compartments of your being. I'm not the the intermingle, the the overlap, but sometimes you can also get discernible said that is a spiritual map. Making sense to you in full operation. Mm -hmm. That is a man of the soul in operation. That is a man dream by his mm. is is a worthy makeup. Am I right? Making sense to you? Not naturally pistol. Yeah, it's a worthy makeup. You know. So, in the uh, it, I'm not talking about anything negative here. Okay, I'm just saying there is a source of it, but it has to do with the heart. Just just everything comes to the heart, and that's the Bible actually. So it's not the guts, it's the heart. So guts is only strength, vitality. The heart is, is essence of your being. It's the intent of your being, if you will. You know, so 
uh, I'm speaking something semi mystical. I'm, I hope you can appreciate it and not in any mm-hmm. mystical way. Okay. And uh, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so when God sent that to me, um, He said, like a thundering voice, said, Now I have given you the fast heart. I have no idea what that means. You understand my point? I have no idea what that means. I mean, puzzle mm-hmm. me to no end. And it's actually make me detressed all the time for many years to come. Because I know I don't have a father's heart. You see? You understand mm-hmm. my point? When I look at Noah, I know that is some part of me said, that is not my child. I won't allow him, respect him, uh, and, uh, and la- 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 w- like a team would do. Am I right? You understand my point? You know, so... But I never have my own family, never have my blood. And God said, I want me to be, have a father's heart towards this young man. Oh, I do mm. it. I mean, I can't. Mm. You know, I won't, but I can't. You know, I just don't have a, mm-hmm. the education. You know, I, I struggle. I mean, I'm literally, in, I mean, just, I don't know what to do with myself. I don't blame anyone else. I know it's good for mm-hmm. me. I should be that, but I'm not there. So it was a it was a very terrible time for me. He understands my point, you know. So the things happen, certain things actually challenge, challenging. But suffice to say, the Lord gave gracious things. More than that, He sent Tim to a father's house ranch to work there. You know, so same that nature. For him, it was a miracle. For me, it was a miracle. I'm happy. But in my private quarter, which I don't necessarily talk to people about it, <laughs> mm-hmm. I was struggling. You know, God just said to me, you know, there is a man, he's a father of heart ranch and talking with a, a certain brother and he was working for him. This is a miracle, you know. Is there anything for me there? I'm fully ready to let my life invest in that ministry um, mm-hmm. because and uh, I had to pray to God said, is this where you want me to be? You see, they come to me, tell them, God showed them seven years ago, timeline, his own spiritual song, fly from Florida, I said, uh, you know, you got to welcome that there's a wheel over your mind and you just leave the wheel to see who they are. I mean, every time the, I mean, not me talking, this old gentleman come to tell all us these things every time, you know. I mean, it's not one time, you know. Almost every conversation we had. So I thought, well, there must be prayer, <laughs> has something to do with this. <laughs> and I'm ready when once I'm ready, I always do this when I make a meditation. I'll go through with God, and I want to go through with God. And we drove myself and pray to God. God, is there is there something here really want me to be part and this. That was the revelation was very disappointing. It was very, very troublesome. And, but I can't use that to disrupt people's life, you know, and says my point, you know, so I can't tell people what to do. So what I do, I just have to endure, to go through the process and complaining. And my heart will complain. Oh Lord, you know, if we, you want to have a fast heart, send these things like a miracle, and people want to do it. Why? Why another set it back? Another circling. And I, I get out of all from Austin, try to run away from <laughs> and bog down to go through a cycle again, okay, you know. What in the world? I mean you can't think about it. My impatience. You complaining? Well, you look at my complaining little <laughs> face. <laughs> it's not for me per se, you know, a lot of people mm-hmm. are around, you know, a lot of people's life and ministry and, and the reason in God calling the balance. Mm-hmm. And I cannot just say that I would do what I want to do. I don't have the freedom to do it. And um, then things have change. Things change. In the my whole set of understanding began to change. I began to see the damage done by the orphan spirit in different characters around me. 
I begin to see through the negative experiences, correlation, and unscrewable ideas of man to serve God has, has ruined his foundation. You know, they have only doing things namely, you know, uh, without any substance and without any reality. And it's, then the father said, what are you going to do about it? You see, to be a son, to serve your father, just do what he told you to do. Right? Father, you want me to go here? I'll do that. You want to preach here? I won't preach that. You want to do this, do that? Great. I will carry the message. No problem. I'm just a messenger. I'm just doing what he told me to do. But to be a father is a totally different game. You can't do what you want to do. You have to patiently wait in the process for people to come to a place you can build things with them. You can collaborate with them. And you can't say, okay, that is not part of your job. You just, that's, where you, that's what it means to be a father. <laughs> Waiting for others to, to come up, you know? You know, and that's my point, waiting for others to, I don't say I'm doing a good job. I'm only saying that it's a, it's a, it's a different way to love God. It's a different way to appreciate who he is. A different way, different vantage point to appreciate who our Lord is. Why he is a perfect son. Why he is called more than the Prince of Peace, the mighty counselor, I mean, the wonderful counselor, but he's a father also. Why he has such patience with those who supposed to always try his nerves, you know, like Peter, you know, like others. I mean, John, as much as we think is amiable and, and, and the likable person he is, but son is called the son, son the sounder. As, as we're a strong temper. I mean, we're we're in better character. Thomas, you know, always a doubting challenge. I'm not saying that it, they are bad people per se. I'm just saying they have character flaw, obviously. You need to be mended. How you do that? I mean, are you supposed to do that even begin with? In the past, my understanding, well, I don't play a part in that. They are fellow sons of mine, you know? I've done my job to help them, enlighten them. But, hey, father, it's your business to take care of them. You know? so, <laughs> I mean, I've done my job, you know? It's, it's, it's your people, it's your son. <laughs> Lord, it's your, it's, it, it, it's, it's your, your friend, you know? It's your shape, you know? So I, I can help, but I, I don't know what I can change. I can change the heart. I can change the mind, you know. So you have a different engagement, love people, care for people, because you have different identification now yourself, what it means, you know, to, to love the Father, love the Lord. Uh, my, people talk about identity change all the time, but I will tell you, it is not that easy. It's not that simple. It has to be real. You see, I would call role, you know, assume a role. You know, when I was young, I assume a role. I'm a gifted minister with a mighty spirit. You know, I can prophesy. I can heal people, cast demons out. I'm, I'm, I'm a boy in the power of the spirit. I'm a spiritually anointed person. I can challenge the devil. <laughs> And then I'm a song. I know, begin to know the importance of personal character, the importance of uh, obedience, the importance of uh, pursue holiness, the importance of uh, sacrificial life. I mean, you, you have to die to yourself. I mean, you, you may don't totally die. So today I don't think I'm dead, but you decide that is a ball game. You know, your life don't belong to yourself. You know, you're going to live and aspire and try to 
simply like a song, like the Lord did. And, and then you become a somehow like a father. You know, uh, for me, it's it's gracious God knows what I need. He always provides necessary resources or operations. He give people, am I? Give me young ones. Yeah, I have to do it. I mean, I I'm, I'm also not have to do it. I think I I'm giving the provision to do it. Now, what about your life? God has stirred up your heart to seek different things of Him, know better of Him, and uh, Moses become a, a pure bride, a wonderful daughter, you know, a uh, one truly loves Him. I think He really began to open up a sister, what means to be a son. You know, I'm not saying you can be a mother or a father in any other light. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, the spirit of sonship begins to open up for you, to groom you for the substance, Amen. the love of sonship. You know, it can only you from the enlightenment of wisdom that given through sonship. And Christ Jesus of wisdom, right? Is, is, is the source for all these things. In this light, I bless you and I celebrate with you. It's not easy to break the old mold. It's maybe in first pen. Required mm -hmm. things in life may be challenging or demanding or it will be disorienting to happen. But remember, God is the sovereign. He knows it all. He, he, he will carry mm -hmm. us all over. And you need to be super confident. Let me speak to this in your area. You are a chosen one. Mm -hmm. You are chosen more for your personal fulfillment. You're choosing to serve him in capacity Amen. as now, yeah, no. But you have a hint of it. I think God already spoke to it, you know, and, and uh, some part to do with my life to serve the Lord. Uh, I never take those things lightly. You know, I don't speak those things easily to people either. They have to be there, you know, and in our situation. How many times that God need to confirm that to all us? For us to be convinced, yeah, you know. So I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when we speak almost like after the story, you know, it's not happy, exciting, or overburdensome. You, you, but you need to know if you obey and believe this way, the power of God, the grace of God, is invisible. His timing impeccable. His ways undeniable. Do you understand that? I live in that to a little extent. But I will tell you, the devil cannot mess around. No man can stop it. Not even mm -hmm. myself. As long as I desire that, dedicate to that. You know, I always repent from my wilderness so lack of devotion to that and turn back to the right way. And God never blame us. He knows what we made up. <laughs> He knows who our weakness is. He knows our struggle better than ourselves. And in that light, I want you to pray and uh, if you have anything and share. Actually, I, I think you could have a vision. So let me speak in tongues a little bit. Let God reveal vision to you. Okay. To, to comfort you. To affirm you. Let's see the word comfort. Sometimes based on human need. Okay. But I want to tell you, no, I want God comforting you you with his comfort, as Paul said, his comfort, not the human oriented, not based on human need. His comfort is that he said, I know you. <laughs> I mean, put in the dungeon on the cross, but I know you. I love you <laughs> with everlasting love. Don't use your time span, your situation to, to present back to me mm. my love. And my comfort, it was said he pleased to bruise his son. It satisfied a great pleasure mm. for him to have his son crucified or come the devil, you know, offer the prophet sacrifice. He pleased him. He didn't spare them. He didn't spare him from those moments. So he's a comfort, but he comforted him. He comforted him. He always comforted him. Yes, 
a song I know what you're doing. And I love it. And I care about you. Even this seems super uncomfortable to you. Lord, men like to be inspired by the romantic, heroic, or poetic, Lord. All those are true and yes, are good. <laughs> but in the end of the day, flower will fade, leaves will fall. But the fruits you harvest it. And why you fermented in your culture, it's a truly, it's your delight. Every means, Lord, is everlasting flow and substance to you. So I bless this song. I, today I do not call her sister, servant, in another color. I address her as your son. And I pray more than the comfort of this, this destination. And no voice can tell her she is not. But Lord, you're pleased to make her one, holy into this life. It's your good pleasure to give her all things. Even so, Lord, we know that the song, you know, mature from baby, if you will, <laughs> To, to when we fully can go about your business. Even go about business are good enough, Lord. For that's just doing things. But really learn to be one with you. You will do nothing. We're still one with you in your work, in your desire, in agreement with you. You worship adoration of you. Not because who you are to us, but because of who you are yourself. We have no ants or worms. Even sometimes we feel so. No, we have to be egos, lines. For there are things still transacting the external, Lord, in the usage realm. No, we are yours and you are ours. We are one with you. We are your joy. We are your fullness of delight. And I pray your hours as well, Lord. The way can be lonely. <laughs> Trials can be hard. And the searching the quest can be so wrecking, Lord. Painful. But I know also the joy and the strength you have Give us from we were, before we we're born. Uh, there's no, no way anyone can argue with me, even Nicole herself. That such mm -hmm. heart is not given to her before the foundation of the world. And that is not the theology. A good wish it was. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And that is a truth. With, with, with substance, Lord. Because I know you made me so. So when I found such heart, such a spirit, I instantly know <laughs> that is so, Lord. But I praise you for 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 this joy to know her life. In many roles, capacities, but above all, Lord, as a fellow son, as the one who truly delight in you, serving you, and want to do nothing but to know you, to be with you. Not that you pat on the shoulder and say, well, no, that's not good enough. We want to be one with you. We want to understand everything about you and care what do you care. Joy, what do you joy? Sorrow, what do you sorrow? Let our life, Lord, 
be a free expression, a free flow. Well, you want us to be mother, let's be a mother. A sister, sister, a wife, a wife, Lord. But if a son serves, the king, the praise, a prophet of age, a teacher of many, a messenger from above. So be it, Lord. In this, I thank you for this precious life. I, I, I just pray against anything, give her a feeling adequacy, Lord. Let's let that totally be that filthy garment, the shabby garment, take it away, Lord. Put on more than a white robe on her, but it put on the beautiful garment of yours, the sunship, Lord. Garment of praise, garment of Christ, the garment of glory. Yes, Lord, I just ask you to lay hands on her and not her. Moses tell her she's cleansed, but tell her the oil of your joy, the oil of your love is a pour upon her, Lord. As he humbly, I pray that she will understand. She don't have to kneel before you or bow before you to receive a blessing. She just need a bow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, bow is the right word. But look, look, she can stand before you. With a face, lift it up. Be with joy. Is that not your blessing? Even through Aaron to the people of Israel, Lord. Said, let the face of God shine upon you. And we can't see you face to face. Because that's your joy. So that romantically we can lose each other's eyes. That's, that's maybe true appreciation. But Lord, that is your man-made ideas, what it means to be loved. But face to face, because we just appreciate each other to the core, to the uttermost. We know each other. The utmost. Lord, this is your servant Paul's heart that he won't know you as he is known. Or he won't apprehend you. Apprehend. <laughs> wow. Apprehend. Beyond the theology books, beyond thoughts and libraries, beyond all human records, thoughts. But apprehend, Lord. Give us that apprehension. Give us that ability like Adam in the beginning, but not with us folly. To pray in all things because we are praying to you, Lord. And can call it, that's a rose. I don't name it as a rose. But when you are preaching today, when I look at this sister, I can see, that's a song. That's a song. It's sealed by the name of God. That kind of prevention. But that is the gospel. And the power, the authority to give to us to seal those belong to you for eternity, for your pleasure. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for provision be given in all aspects of life to support this one's life to blossom and establish your horse in life and in all God-given relationships, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, do you see anything? Go ahead and share. I see you have a... Yeah, I... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, the Lord showed me basically what you said before you said it. <laughs> um, I saw myself on this dog sled uh, being led by like six to eight, like white wolf dog type things um, up, a, up a snowy. Well, it was just sort of like a windy road. And then it went up a hill and then the, do the dogs were pretty much up to their heads in snow 
going uphill. And so first it was this, you know, windy way, and then it started to go uphill. And then later it winds again, but in, in, the, in the part where it's going uphill, um, I began to take off my snow clothes. So my, my, my mittens and then my hat and my scarf. And I began to take these things off and hand them up to the Lord. And he took them. And then in, in their place, he, he, he replaced them with actually like a crown and jewels and necklaces and rings. Like he lavished these gifts on me while mm. I was going up this mountain, taking mm. off these other garments and putting on these ones he gifted me with. Mm. It was very loving and very over, overwhelming because I definitely felt undeserving <laughs> of them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. As should be. Mm. Yes, Lord. Is that amazing how God can do that? Is the Lord always happy to help us? Amazing. He didn't send angels to do it, huh? <laughs> he himself attending to the Father's business. That's a true friend do. You know, I remember the Lord serving me in, in the capacity like you're doing even minor things, you know, major things. More things it's a sermon would do. And I said, Lord, you can do that. And said, let me be your brother, basically. You know? let, me, let me do what I want to do. <laughs> I mean, this is a joy for me to, to help you. I mean, to, so I, it's my joy to plead the Father. <laughs> so give me the joy to serve you. Mm. Wow. It was, it can be, God can be so overwhelming good to our sister. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. One day I was uh, plenty in the middle of the night. I think you might have heard it. It's people, I heard it because it's so simple. You sleep in the mind. They don't understand. I wept all night because of it. I mean, even days after. Mm -hmm. Because it's so meaningful, so impactful for you when he speaks a simple word of comfort. And all your stress, all your, you know, fight inside of you, you know, it's dissolved. One day I said, Lord, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm blame myself not doing good enough. Blame myself not seeking him enough. <laughs> I'm eager to want to be where I think I'm supposed to be, but I'm not getting there, right? Sometimes you have this mm -hmm. imagination that it, Somehow you're just seeking hard enough, you know, saying if you're not getting there, yeah. you feel checked, you feel, blame yourself, say that, well, you know what, there must yeah. something wrong with me. And uh, yeah. <laughs> because you don't understand, take a process, right? Take a process. You don't, you don't think you get mm -hmm. anywhere. And you even foster a certain idea, God, why you let me sleep? You know, I'm, I'm tried, you know, I tried real hard here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And uh, and I remember I uh, the father come around literally I was, I was in the sofa boiling over you know just I, I'm not an emotional person I just when I'm boiling over I'm just being quiet you know you know so and uh, and uh, he sat on my sofa beside me and I almost put a hand on my shoulder because I was lying on the sofa just trying to nap, you know. And uh, I can feel him. He, he's like, then he touched my head, you know. You know, said, uh, I mean, you, you like, I'm like a young boy sleeping on the, on the side, uh, you know, on the sofa and then he come around like a father literally touch you, you know, so he said, mm. he said, son, be patient with me. I mean, pleading. <laughs> Be patient with me. I mean, <laughs> wow, I'm, I can't stop crying, you know, when I think about it. <laughs> yeah. 
what do you mean? <laughs> Be patient with you? I thought, <laughs> you put on me as so well. You know? so, <laughs> I'm becoming impatient with myself. You know? <laughs> so, so it's a surprising. I've been mean, totally on the trail of thoughts, right? So, what? And uh, I was just, I ball over that for a couple of days to think about what's that, what he, what he that means. <laughs> you see, that's how God opened up our understanding about what it means to take a process for the sound to mature. He can't bypass that for you, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, he can't allow you to sort of sort of cut that. <laughs> mm. So you have to do it, you know, in your life, in situation, you, you need to go through that. You know, it's like a bit training, you know? I mean, whoa, wow. I mean, tell you, sister, when after that, you heard the people talking about this or that, the growing God and this and this with that, well, you pretty much shake your head. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> because that's the whole God teach us all. <laughs> he has a, he has a baseline template <laughs> and he want everyone to go through it. <laughs> Conformity to his song. I mean, there's a pattern here. There's a law, there's a law of life here. You love your son, you love your daughter. You want them to grow to be someone, you know, your godliness, maybe all other talents or gifts in the life. And you want them to have a tomorrow, you know, if possible, if you can afford it. But you know, it's not going to work. You know, it, it, it takes some time for them to mature, for them to be able to handle those things. You know, it's, it's, and you enjoy the process. It doesn't blame them, you know, getting there tomorrow. <laughs> you actually fully enjoy the process for them to grow up go through the process. Because you know, that is the joy of parentinghood, you know? Be a father, be a mother. He tell that. If you just took that away, said, hey, I'm born, born a perfect son. Over no struggles. I mean, how express your love? How you enjoy the process to see him grow? I mean, anyway, I want you to pro, uh, pray, sister, we wrap it up, so. Lord, we, I thank you so much for this time. For your love is uncomparable to anything ever known, ever seen, ever heard of. And man, do we long to know every bit of it. Um, thank you so much. Uh, your son, Emmanuel, chooses to be your vessel, chooses to be a father chooses to be a son to you, Lord, daily, moment by moment. What a gift. And boy, do I feel loved knowing that you have given to me a gift. Uh, and I just, I am very blessed by your words tonight, by your visions, by your, um, just really thankful for your son, Lord. And I, I pray, Lord, that you can even uh, continue to show me a vision for him or a word for him, Lord, um, as I lift him up to you in prayer, because he is just a valuable, a valuable vessel, a valuable son. And I am encouraged, and I know that you have many to encourage through him. That has been shown to me many times, Lord, that you are about a good work in your son and about a work that has to be distributed through the nations and through others and there's just much to be done and that can be heavy and there can be human prices he has to pay i know his willing heart always says yes lord no matter the physical ailments or tolls it takes on his physical body lord and i even ask for a healing a if you if you see it to be so father because um 
in his sickness and in his pain and in all things that the human body brings forward. Uh, you are, are still the great physician and the God over that. And um, I know that you have set about a good work. And so I just, I just pray for healing so that he can be in his tip top shape to um, produce what it is you're asking of him. Because I know, Lord, that you're asking much of your son. And uh, you continue to um, respond to his requests of you to serve him, uh, to serve you, I mean, Lord. And um, I know that you are hearing his requests, Lord, and uh, see his service to you as extremely valuable, as I do. And so... Uh, just pray, Father, for uh, an enlightening and enrichment um, as he is being called to oversee much in this time, in this era. Um, much has been made known to him uh, through his dedication to you. And he sees, he sees a lot. He sees um, many, many things that are unseen in this realm and he's going to have to portray them to uh, many that don't know and don't see. So I just pray a, a real supernatural uh, connecting of the two, Lord, and in your wisdom. Just continue, Lord, to reveal that wisdom to him so that he can connect those the way that you're asking. And, um, I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Sister Shreddy, a, a great joy and the encouragement to myself <laughs> to talk to you. So, <laughs> bring my best, everybody. Okay? Yeah. I will. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay. Good night. Then. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Good night. Mm -hmm.